Hello, this is Søren from Open Regulatory, and this video is about how you get your UDI from GS1. But first, I want to show you where you even need a UDI in the first place. So, for example, you might have seen a medical device label. It looks something like this. And here you have the UDI. Um, the other parts of the label are also quite interesting. Um, I've actually made up this device. It's called Open Device because we're at Open Regulatory. And Open Regulatory is also the EU authorized representative in this case. And the manufacturer is located in Switzerland. This device has a CE mark and a notified body number beneath it. That means that this is at least a class 2A device. But let's look at this UDI. So it consists of two parts. You have here the UDI DI that stands for Unique Device Identifier Device Identifier. Very funny. And uh, you have the UDI PI after the 11 here that stands for Production Identifier. Um, this is only the human readable part, but you also have this barcode which which is essentially the machine readable part. Um, you would need that if you actually print a physical label and it might get scanned by some machine. But if you, for example, just have a software that only will show the label to human eyes, um, you don't actually need the barcode. All right, where else do you need a UDI? You also need it here in your intended use, but this is actually a different UDI. This is the basic UDI DI. That's a different number again. And you also need it in the Udemed database. Here you also need the basic UDI DI. So you essentially have three different numbers. Um, basic UDI DI, UDI DI, and UDI PI. Um, this basic UDI DI you might actually also need in communication with your notified body or uh, with the competent authorities. So as a quick reminder, the GS1 terminology is a bit different. So you have actually different numbers that represent those UDIs. So for example, the basic UDI DI um, you get through the global model number or short GMN. So this would actually be your basic UDI DI. This one, again, you use in the intended use in the UDMED database or with uh, your notified body. And the UDI DI is called GTIN in the GS1 space. That stands for global trade item number. This one you would put on the label um, of the product or you might also need it at some places in your technical documentation. And then in the end you have the UDI PI. That one you would uh, generate yourself, but you would use the rules from the application identifier. And this UDI you would find only on the product label. Okay, let's buy our UDI or our GTIN from GS1. For that, we go to their website, which is gs1.org. And this is actually the international website of GS1. If you click on get your barcodes here, you can select from one of the 116 GS1 offices around the world. Um, from which one you want to get your UDI. In our case, I'm going to choose Germany and I'll be redirected to their website. If you compare this with other uh, GS1 offices, you might find different pricing models for the UDIs. So it might make sense to compare them, but usually they all have smaller and bigger packages, depending on how many GTINs you need. And that's the same here in Germany. You have a very small package with one to five GTINs, and you have a package with 10, or you have one that starts at 1000. 
As a reference here, you can look at how many major versions of your software you want to release in the next few years. So usually you only need a new UDI DI when you make a significant change, which means a significant update to the U UI or um, you bump the first digit of your three digit version number. Um, so, or you, you change the intended use a little bit, then that would all mean that it's a significant change and you need a new UDI DI. Um, if you're just a small manufacturer and this happens only every two years or so, I would recommend to start with one UDI and this decision is also reversible, so you can always upgrade to a different package. So no worries here. Um, those packages also differ in some other aspects, but to be honest, they are not really relevant for the UDI case. So I would uh, just ignore this. One important aspect is though that GS1 um, makes their pricing dependent on the annual turnover of the companies they are selling to. So in this case, sorry for the German here, they only offer the smaller packages to companies with an annual turnover of below than 250,000 euros. If you're above that, you immediately need to purchase this GS1 complete package. And when we look at this more closely, um, you can choose the variants, but here you can actually choose which annual turnover your company makes. And depending on that, the annual fee uh, increases and it can be up to, um, what is this? 30,000 euros per year, just for the numbers. That's crazy. All right. Um, with this GS1 complete, they also offer you to buy a GS1 certificate, which somehow certifies that your numbers are legit. But this is not really relevant uh, in our context. All right, but let's go back to the uh, smaller package. Let's buy one of those. Here you can actually choose whether you want to just buy one uh, GTIN or two, three, four, five, depending on that, the price rises. Um, so here you first have to enter your company data. Let's do that real quick. Okay, so this is our open regulatory data. Then here you need to um, name one contact person in your company who's dealing with the UDIs. So I'm going to enter my details here. Okay, so I did that. I just didn't want to disclose this data to you in this video. And the next question they ask you is whether you want to publish your GTIN in a public database called GEPIR. Um, that lets anyone in the world um, verify your GTINs. So that might be beneficial if someone externally wants to verify that your numbers are correct, then you could publish it here. Then you choose your paying method and you need to um, affirm that your annual turnover is below 250,000 euros. And then you have to accept the terms and condition and then you can buy it. Okay, welcome to my email inbox. Now I've actually received the email from GS1. It took only a few seconds, so really fast. And in this email, they send you a link. Um, and here, if you click on it, you're redirected to this page where you can actually set a password for your account. And then after that, you can access the GTIN manager when you click here. Here you can enter your email address and your newly set password, and then you can log in.